channel. It's future Megan here. I went to edit this video and realized that somehow all of the intro footage that I had taken was blurry. <laughs> so I wanted to pop on and just say hi. Um, today I'm going to be showing you guys my sourdough bread routine, which I'm so, so excited about. I love making sourdough bread. I'm definitely not an expert, <laughs> as you will see. Um, but I took a class about a year ago in August, I think. Um, and I've been making sourdough bread ever since, and I know in the quarantine, bread making has become quite the trend so I asked you guys on Instagram what kinds of videos you wanted to see and I actually got a lot of responses asking me to share my sourdough routine so that's what I'm gonna be doing today and I hope you guys enjoy the video the first thing that I did was to take my sourdough starters out of the fridge because that's where I keep them so these are my little guys right out of the fridge like I mentioned before um, I do keep them in the fridge and I feed them one to two times per week because having them out on the counter and feeding them every day is a little much for me but you can see when you open them up I always keep the lids on them very loosely so gas can escape um, you can see that like liquid on top is called hooch and it's basically like a byproduct of the yeast eating the gluten and that means that they are hungry and they need to be fed this one actually has quite a bit so i have a few sets of jars for my starters the first thing i do when i go to feed them after i take them out of the fridge is get my new jars out and then i take the starters over to the sink and i pour out that hooch liquid that's on top and then i pour half of a cup into a measuring cup and this is what's going to go in our new jars and the rest of what's left in this old jar is called your sourdough discard or unfed sourdough um, i've also heard it called unripe um, and you can use this to make all kinds of stuff you can do like sourdough pancakes waffles pizza crust biscuits um, so if I'm going to make something like that with sourdough discard that week, I will just go ahead and put that aside. Otherwise, I will just rinse it out. Get this guy in his new little home. And then I'm going to do the same thing with my second starter. Another thing that you can do with these um, sourdough discards, if you have a friend that wants to start making sourdough, you can actually gift them your discard and they can use it as their starter. So they would just feed this portion the same way that you're feeding that half cup that you just measured out because it's the exact same thing. Um, and if you don't have a starter yet and you want to make one from scratch, I didn't make mine from scratch, so I can't personally teach you how to do that. But I found that the King Arthur Flower website is a really, really great sourdough resource. So I'll link some of their blog posts down below. They have one on how to make your own starter. And then I know they have one that's just a bunch of sourdough discard recipes, um, which is really fun. And I definitely want to try some of those soon. So I'll link that down below just in case that's something that you guys are wanting or needing. Okay, so now we have our two little sourdough starter guys here. And these guys need to be fed now. So I'm going to show you guys how I feed them. So the first thing you're going to need for each one of your starters is a half of a cup of water um, and if you're feeding two like I am you obviously want a full cup and I highly recommend using filtered or bottled water for this because depending on where you live the chlorine in your tap water could actually kill the yeast in your starter and kill your starter which would be so sad so you can get it out of your fridges like filtration system if that's all you have but bottled water is probably best now we want to heat our filtered water up um, and you could put it in the microwave, but I prefer to just do it on the stove. It barely takes any time because all you need is for it to get lukewarm. I just know that sometimes the microwave messes with the like molecular structure stuff, so I feel like it's just safer to heat it up on the stove. Once your water has been heating up for a couple of minutes on the stove, you can just go ahead and add it to your starters. You want to do about half and half. And then for each starter, we're going to use a cup of flour to feed them. Um, and I like to use a mixture of white flour and wheat flour. So I typically use about two parts white flour to one part wheat flour when I feed. So I'm filling this up about two thirds of the way. I always get flour on my counter during this part. The measurements don't have to be exact. And now I'm just adding this into my sourdough starter again this is where a wider mouth jar would definitely come in handy and then i'm just gonna put my spoon in there and mix it all up until it's like a pancake batter like consistency now i'm just taking that rubber band that i showed you guys earlier and i'm using it to mark the level of where the sourdough starter is when it has just been fed because it will actually grow like probably up to here at least um, and we want to be able to track that growth because you wait until it doubles in size um, before you start baking with it that's how you know that it's actually ready to leaven your bread 
and I just pop the lid on at kind of an angle. You definitely don't want to do this um, really tight because you want there to be some more for the gases to escape. So I am going to uh, repeat this with the second jar. And I know it looks like it's all the way up here, but that's just kind of from where it was mixed. The actual line is why I put the rubber band. Okay, so I've got my two sourdough starters here. They're both fed. For whatever reason on this one, the consistency was a little bit off. Um, it was just too thick. And you want it again to be that like pancake batter like consistency, maybe a little bit thicker. So I just went ahead and added some more water. I didn't even heat it up or anything. These guys are pretty resilient once you get like a strong starter going. Um, so now I'm gonna leave them out on my counter. If you are storing them in the fridge, you wanna leave them out on your counter for at least two hours, just to give the yeast the time to do its thing and to eat the gluten before you put it in the fridge, which like really slows everything down. Or if you do wanna make bread with it, you wait until it doubles in size. So for me today, I'm going to put this one in the fridge after about two hours. And this one, I'm just gonna keep an eye on until it doubles in size because I wanna show you guys how I make bread. So I will see you guys when this guy is nice and ripe and ready. While I'm waiting for the starter to double in size, I did make some little sourdough sandwich biscuits with my discards. So I'm gonna pop these in the oven and I'll let you know how they turn out. So these are my sourdough biscuits. I let them go a little bit too long, so they're a little more golden than I would have wanted them to be. Um, and some of them are a little flat, but then some of them aren't. So I would call this a moderate success for my first attempt. Starters have been out for about two hours and you can see they're starting to grow. Um, so I'm gonna pop this one in the fridge and let this one keep uh, doing its thing until it's doubled. Okay, so it's six o'clock now and my sourdough starter looks like this. It is almost doubled in size. Honestly, normally I would probably wait a little bit longer for it to get a little bit bigger, um, but I am running out of light to film this video, so we're gonna do it now. <laughs> this is what it looks like. You can see it's nice and bubbly and active. Kind of shake it up to see the consistency. So I'm gonna take this starter and I'm gonna add a quarter of a cup of it into a bowl. And depending on how often you want to make sourdough, you might want to feed your starter again at this point if you think you're gonna need more soon. Um, but since I have two and because this is still pretty full, I don't actually need to do that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pop mine back in the fridge. Oh, also, yes, I did change. It's really hot today and I got hot in my dress. So now we're going to add the rest of our ingredients to this. So I'm gonna add one and a third cup of warm water, four cups of flour. Um, you can do white, wheat, a mixture of the two. If you do wheat, it's gonna be denser and you'll probably need to use a little bit of extra water. I definitely wouldn't recommend doing more than half and half white and wheat. Um, I typically tend to stay to that like one third, two thirds ratio if I'm gonna put wheat flour in my bread and also one and a half teaspoons of salt. And we're just gonna mix that all together until it is one big dough ball. And then we're just gonna cover it with a towel and let it proof overnight for eight to 10 hours. And this is how she looks just shaped into a rough ball. So this guy's all ready to go. Just gonna pop my little towel over him and let him rest for eight to 10 hours. Um, and he'll get really big and puffy. And then I will check back with you guys in the morning and show you guys how I actually bake my loaf. Okay, so it's morning now. We have our little dough friend. He's been proving for about eight to 10 hours. So he's risen quite a bit. Okay, so now I'm just gonna take this guy out of his bowl, get him on a flour surface. And you can see the top is like a little bit crusty. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna stretch and fold and stretch and fold and stretch and fold all the way around. Um, and this does knock some of the air out. Um, so then we have to let it proof again for like another hour. So I like to put my towel in my bowl. If you have like a banneton that you can put flour in, that's even better because then you don't get your towel messy. Um, but I just kind of try to do it like this so it's like halfway and then I can use this to fold up over the edge. But you just want to place this guy in here with the seam up and then cover him and we're going to let him rise for another hour. About 10 minutes before I'm ready to bake it, I will go ahead and preheat my oven to 450 so it gets nice and hot. And I put my cast iron pot, or you can use um, a Dutch oven too, in there as well. So that is like at 450 degrees once I put the bread in. Once that is all heated up, I very carefully remove the cast iron pan from the oven, take the lid off. I like to line that with parchment paper. And then I just take my little dough baby and pop them right in. 
in. Oh no, he went the wrong way. You definitely want him to be, you definitely want him to be seam side down. Now we need to score it. So today I'm just gonna do a simple kind of like X. Pop the lid back on and he's ready to go in the oven. Okay Google, set a timer for 35 minutes. So after those initial 35 minutes, I take the top off of the cast iron pot and I put it back in for 10 to 15 more minutes until it is nice and golden brown on top. And here is what our finished loaf looks like. You can tell when it's done because if you knock on the back of it, it will sound hollow. And you definitely wanna wait to cut into this until after it cools. She is pretty, she's definitely a little bit flatter <laughs> than I wanted her to be, which means she's probably gonna be a little bit dense. Um, but that's just because I was uh, focusing so much on filming and my filming schedule that I overproved the dough a little bit. Still looks pretty good. All right, moment of truth. Let's see how we did. Normally I don't cut it right down the middle, but I wanted to do a big reveal. Okay, we ready? Oh, yay, she looks good. I'm pretty sure I changed the gender of this halfway through. I'm pretty sure I was calling it a he when it was dough. You were. <laughs> it's she now that it's bread, but a little tiny bit dense, but overall a pretty good loaf. So this is our finished loaf. Um, again, not perfect. I'm not an expert baker, but this is the routine that's been working for me. Um, and this turns out even better when I'm not so focused on filming <laughs> because I had to work with the lighting so I think I overproved a little bit but it still looks really delicious and it's something that I really enjoy doing and I'm so excited that I got to share it with you so I hope you guys enjoyed this video on my sourdough bread routine and I will see you guys in the next one.